God bless you all for joining us today. I want to talk for a little while in preparation of your discussion about corporate worship, or we could call it uh, communal worship. We could call it common worship. It's what we do when we gather together, usually on a weekly basis, gather together the people of God in the church to worship him. Um, let me just say this. I, I think a positive if there are positives to be brought out of this pandemic that we have found ourselves in, it's been a call to awareness of the faithful members of the body of Christ who for a long time have been unable to physically gather together for corporate worship. There are those that are shut-ins. There are those that are unable to gather on a consistent basis. And I believe this season of global pandemic isolation has forced our churches globally to address this neglected uh, segment of our population, of our church body. And um, maybe this has been a silver lining, a blessing to these wonderful people that are a part of the body of Christ. However, I, I will say on the heels of that, that I have heard many people, even globally, that have said, you know, I don't really need to go to church. I have found through this period of isolation that uh, I can worship God wherever I am. In fact, I, I can get on YouTube or I can watch TV and I can see a, a whole smorgasbord of, of preachers and other worship services and, and I can feed myself. Um, from the word of God, I can worship God, just me and God, you know, I, I really don't need the rest of the church. Can I just uh, maybe encourage you with this today? Maybe it's not all about you. Maybe someone else needs your prayer. Maybe someone else needs your worship. Maybe your praise is for somebody else. You see, to be a Christian is to be connected to the body of Christ. Now, Paul speaks about this in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, also 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Ephesians chapter 4. It speaks about the body of Christ. We are all members of the same body of which Christ is the head. Uh, he writes to the church of Ephesus and said, we are fitly joined together by that which Every joint, every one of us supplies something to it. He says that the foot cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The eye cannot say to another part of the body, I don't need you. We all need each other. We all contribute to the body of Christ. We are created. We are the imago Dei. We are created in the image of God. And so we are created with the purpose of worshiping God. And also, we are created for communion with each other. We need each other. I need you. You need me. We have different giftings. We have different abilities according to what God has given to us. And we need to use those together corporately as the body of Christ. Now, let's talk briefly about the worship service itself. Before we even gather together, as the body of Christ, as the church for worship. First, prepare yourself with prior personal worship. What does your daily activities look like? What does your daily worship look like? Do you have a time of devotion for yourself? Because how you worship individually is going to affect how you worship corporately. So it's important. I, I remember as a kid growing up in a Pentecostal church, and it was common practice to have prayer before the Sunday evening service. And uh, we always had church start at 630. But the service actually started at seven. But the prayer meeting started at 630. So from 630 to seven, we always had 30 minutes of prayer. And our pastor and my mom and dad were very emphatic about that. What time does church start? Church starts at 6.30 because the preparation was that 30 minutes before. 
uh, before the actual church service started and the worship and the singing and the praise and the prayer and, and then the preaching and all that. And we had some very powerful church services following this 30 minutes of prayer. Sometimes it would even carry over. The prayer service would carry over into the scheduled service. So Lord, help me not just to reflect on the, the good old days, but actually help me to restore these practices again. So finally, I want to talk uh, just briefly about um, our motivation for corporate worship. What is it that motivates us to worship together? What's your motivation for gathering together with the people of God, with other believers, with other brothers and sisters in the Lord? It, do you worship corporately only to receive from God? Do you worship together with the other brothers and sisters only to offer praise unto God? Or are you worshiping maybe to help somebody else? This is something that we had mentioned already. Maybe our praise is for the benefit of somebody else that came to that service with a very devastating week behind them. Maybe they came to the service with questions that they don't have answers for. Maybe they went through, they have gone through difficult times. They're very dry spiritually. Maybe they, you, we don't know what the context, what everybody comes into this room and we gather together. We all come from a different context. And it's important for us not to necessarily understand where everybody is coming from, but to be aware that they are all coming. We are all coming from a different context. We are all coming from different background, different experiences. Things have happened to us throughout the week. And so maybe I don't really feel like giving a lot into the worship, but by doing so, by taking the extra step and giving praise unto God, that will spill over onto somebody else and benefit them. So what is our motivation? I'm honored that I was allowed to speak into your life a little bit here today, but really I just wanted to prompt some discussion about gathering together as the people of God in communal worship, in a common worship. And so I will leave you with three questions for you to discuss amongst yourself. Just things to think about, maybe provoke you to uh, a little bit of discussion among yourselves when we're speaking about gathering together for worship. The first question is, number one, what are some reasons for gathering together for corporate worship instead of only worshiping in solitude? What are some reasons for, for us gathering together? Why do we gather together to offer worship unto God? Number two, is it important for everyone to prepare their own hearts before entering into corporate worship? And if yes, how do we do this? How do we accomplish this? How do we prepare our hearts before we enter into worship together? And finally, number three, we can ask this question amongst ourselves and discuss it today. Are you motivated for corporate worship or communal worship by selfish reasons? Only what you can receive, only what you get out of it? Or have you considered how your worship affects others in the body of Christ? Just some things to think about, maybe discuss together. God bless you. I appreciate you so much.